not sure what kind of wood this is. Uh, maybe a duke. I'm not, I'm not real sure because I'm partially colorblind, so it's kind of hard for me to tell. But if anyone knows, let me know. So we have our piece of wood picked out, and I used a picture frame that was already in my house to get the measurements. And this one is nine and three sixteenths on the left and right and seven three and three sixteenths on the top and bottom. So when measuring your piece of wood to find out if it's gonna be long enough, you have to add all those measurements up. And I've already done that to make sure this piece of wood is long enough and it is. If you use one piece of wood already long enough to do all four uh, edges, then you can run the whole piece through the router um, making your designs and then after you have your designs in the piece, you'll cut your 45s to put the frame together. This makes it a lot easier to keep from having to run so many pieces through the router different times. This is what I have for a router table. I'm using a Bosch router. Um, Bosch makes a really good router. The only problem with this router table is it doesn't have a lift. So I have to take the router out of this holder down here every time I want to change bits. It's not too big of a deal, but it's kind of hard to get back in there sometimes. So if you do want to get a router table, or if you make your own, you can actually buy this piece and put a lift in it. And then you make your own router tabletop and put this piece down in it. Uh, it has to be very precise. So, you know, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, I would just buy the whole top already made like this. Um, luckily, I have an awesome wife who bought me this for Christmas a couple years ago, and it's worked great for me. Uh, first thing we want to do when we're changing the bit is unplug the router, because you definitely don't want it coming on while you're trying to change a bit. I see this question a lot when uh, people are trying to change bits on their routers. Um, they say that they can never get the collet loose enough to get the bit out. Well, I don't know if every router is like this, but mine is, and I know a lot of other ones are too. Once you get it loose, it has another point of resistance. See, mine was already loose and it still had, you turn it one more time and you'll feel it tight again. So you have to loosen it another turn or two, and then you can do it with your hand and it gets really loose and you can pull it out. This is a 3 inch OG bit. And if you saw my picture of the walnut frame I made, this was the bit that I used. Okay, now that I got my router back in here and locked in, you want to raise the OG bit all the way to the top until it's just barely above, or just barely below actually the top of the table. All right, now that we got our wood plane on every side, we want to line our fence up with the router bit. And as you can see, this bit has a bearing on top. And you want to line your wood up with that bearing and the fence just so that when you rub your wood across the bearing it rolls just a little bit without pushing the wood away from the fence and then once you get it to where you think it's good you lock your fence down test it out make sure that it's not pushing the board away from the fence. If you don't have one of these, I suggest getting one. If you're doing uh, small pieces on a router like this, it keeps your hands and fingers away from the router bit. It's called a gripper. Um, they're about 60 to $70, I think, on Amazon, but they're well worth it. I have this rubber that kind of sticks to the board and pushes it through and you don't have to touch it most of the time and keeps your hands away from this bit. Okay, 
Okay, I got a little burn mark there, but just sand that off. Not that big a deal. Now we have to change the bit to do the next detail that I'm gonna put in this loop. This next bit that I'm using is called the V-Top Slotting Cutter. And it is a 3 8 inch bit. Okay, we got the next bit in there. We don't want this bit to come up too high because you're just putting a, a very small detail in it. I mean, it's all up to you how you want to design the frame, but for this particular frame, I just left it at maybe like a quarter inch off the top of the table. So we're doing this part of the wood. So we want to get the bit where we need it to, to put the design in the right place. And I start out on the back, this, this being the back. Now we want to line our fence up to where we need it. And it's best to get all of this dust out of the way so it's not making your board lift up. So how we get it lined up is since we're putting the design right here and put it up close to the bit to where you want it to start and I'm gonna put two of these in here. So you want the first one as close to the back as you can get without cutting through the edge. So about right there is good. Okay, if you can see it left a little bit of burrs in there, which is fine. We can take a piece of sandpaper and fold it over and get all those out and get it smooth. That's what I had to do with the other one, worked fine. So now we wanna cut the other slot, which would be right down through here. So we have to move our pants again, line it up with that spot. And you wanna turn your blade or your bit so that it's straight front to back this way. So you can tell how much it's gonna cut out. Right there looks good. Tighten our fence down. And we're ready to go with the next cut. Okay. All right, we got two grooves in there. Hope you can see that on camera. Turned out pretty good. All we need to do is just sand the little burrs out of there and we're good to go. It's important to have good bits. I don't really have good bits. I bought a um, pack of like 50 bits on Amazon for like $60. Most bits are $30 a piece for a good one. These bits work. You just have to do a little bit more sanding. This next bit is the router the back to allow for a piece of glass and the cardboard and the picture to fit into that slot. This is just a half inch straight bit. And we put it up about a quarter of an inch off the table. So I line my piece up so that it's just barely tearing out this back part because you don't want to have any leftover right there. And I hope you can see that on the camera, but you want your bit kind of like, like that so you can tell how much it's gonna take out. So we're just barely over the back. And make sure you're routing the right edge. You know, this is gonna be the inside of your picture frame. So this part would be Actually, I'm about to route out the wrong side, so I'm glad I said that. So, it's actually this side that needs routed out. Because that's the part of the picture. Alright, I 
I have a little piece tear out right there on me, yeah. but I think it'll be okay because this piece is a little bit longer than what we need. So we can just cut that piece off. Now you just want to sand all of this away. Okay guys, my sound messed up in this video, so I'm gonna redo it with a voiceover. Hopefully I can match what I'm doing to what I'm saying and everything will work out okay. We're gonna move over to the chop saw and cut the angles. And I do this on a chop saw because my table saw is a little bit wompy jawed and doesn't cut. Um, it's not square with the miter slots. So when you cut your first angle, you just want to look at how your detail is in your piece of wood and make sure you're cutting the angle the correct way and not backwards. If you just picture it in your head, um, how the frame is supposed to look, you'll know whether you're cutting the angles the correct way or not. When you cut that small of a piece, just let your saw blade stop uh, spinning before you lift it back up because it could fling this piece off and, and make it hit you. So I just let the saw blade stop spinning before I lift it back up. And we said we were going to make our first piece at 9 and 3 16 so I'm marking that now. And that's being marked on the back. And then I'll put a little line on the top so I can see it from... Uh, where I'm cutting it at and you just want to line your pencil line up uh, in the right spot and cut on the right side of the pencil line and make sure you cut slow if you're using a miter saw uh, this keeps the blade from bending under too much stress that way your angle is uh, more of a perfect 45 or close as perfect as you can get. And we are right at 9 and 3 sixteenths. So now we just want to finish cutting the rest of our angles. Um, we'll cut another piece at 9 and 3 sixteenths. And the way you get these to match up perfectly is just put the backs together like I'm doing in the video. And line your edges up like that and then make a pencil mark and this will tell you where to cut your next piece I cut the other two pieces, the top and the bottom, off camera. And as you can see, we only have that little piece left. So we did have enough wood and everything worked out perfectly, even with that little chip that we knocked out on the router. So now we can move over and put our frame together. And you want to make sure you put your frame pieces on a clean, flat surface with no wood chips, no dust or anything that will cause the frame pieces to be out of line with each other. I'm using top bond two glue and I will tape up the corners with painters tape. And I saw a trick in a video by David Petrudo where he put glue on the edges like this on the ends and let it dry because the end grain soaks up the glue. So you can leave it on there and let it dry and then put more glue on it. And that way you'll have a, a better bond and it'll hold better. I didn't do this in the video because I watched that video that David made after this one. 
Mine should be okay because I'm going to use pin nailers to nail them, uh, nail the corners together, so it should hold just fine. And make sure you don't have glue on your fingers and touch the wood because it's going to leave uh, glue on the wood if you put some kind of uh, sealer or paint or stain or whatever it's going to show up and when you put your tape on and put your corners together you want to pull your painters tape from one corner to the next as hard as you can without tearing the tape this will hold the corners together and you can also put tape across the top of the corner and help hold it better too and I just put two pin nails in each corner with a 22 gauge pin nailer you can get these pin nailers, this Porter Cable pin nailer, for about $80 to $100, I think, on Amazon. So it's not bad for a pin nailer, and they work pretty good. If you've never used a pin nailer, the nails do not have a head on them, so they barely leave any marks at all, and you can barely even see the nail. In a wood this dark, you probably can't even see it uh, unless you look real close. After I let the glue dry for a while, I take the tape off and then I put on some Odie's oil. And this stuff is really nice. It smells good. It goes on easy and you just buff it off after about 15 or 20 minutes and it brings out the shine. So here it is all finished. Let me know what you think about it in the comments and if you built one, let me know how it turned out. And if you like what you see, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that little bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. And I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.